there, this is Amy C. Oliver, Visitor and Science Center Manager at the Fred Lawrence Whipple Observatory and Jedi in Training. Today, we're celebrating the science of Star Wars. And with just a few things you have right at home in your very own kitchen, you can follow along with us and start growing a kyber crystal. And who wouldn't want to do that? Crystals are the kind of science we could all stare at all day long. And, I mean, if you have everything in your kitchen to grow something that can wield the force, why wouldn't you want to do it? Side note, this experiment is definitely going to give you some kind of energy, but it probably won't help you wield the force. Okay, so a kyber what? In Star Wars, both Sith and Jedi use kyber crystals to power their lightsabers. Big shout out to fandom right here, by the way, because their wiki on kyber crystals is off the chain and totally complete. During training, young Jedi, also called younglings, go to Elam to mine kyber crystals and build their very own lightsabers. Kyber crystals in Star Wars, unlike the ones we'll be making today, are uncolored until they are matched with their Jedi. You probably recognize a few colors of lightsaber. Red, always reserved for Sith or the bad guys. And then other colors, blue and green, the most common, and even teal, yellow, white, and my personal favorite and color for my own kyber crystal, purple from Mace Windu. Our favorite hero, Luke, lost his father's lightsaber in battle with Darth Vader and had to go to Elam to mine a new crystal and build his very own lightsaber, which turned out green. Now, with the kyber crystals we are going to start growing today, it won't take so much effort, but it will take a little bit of patience as you'll only start this activity today and then watch it form over the next several days. Here's what you're going to need a jar or a glass, three to four cups of granulated sugar, water, and food coloring, which is optional. You can always have a white lightsaber. You may even want to add some flavoring. You're also going to need a stick or a string. And if you use a string, you'll need something to tie it to, like a pencil or a utensil. Let's get started. In this experiment, we're learning about supersaturated solutions, molecular bonds, and patterns. That's a lot of learning. But trust me, you're going to want to pay attention. The crystals in Star Wars couldn't form, be mined, or make a lightsaber work without the power of science. So first, bring your water to a rolling boil. You're going to need some help from an adult unless you already are one. This experiment is for everybody. You can boil your water on the stovetop or in the microwave. Once your water has come to a boil, pour in your sugar slowly while stirring. Make sure to dissolve the sugar all the way, but don't let it start to turn into a candy. Remember, the longer that you stir a sugar mixture in boiling water, the sooner it's going to become sticky and hard. Next, let your water and your sugar solution cool for about 10 to 20 minutes. Before the cooling process, add your flavoring and your optional food coloring. Once your solution has cooled, pour it into the jar. Now, there's a trick to making sure that you can grow a kyber crystal big and strong over the next several days, and that is to wet your string or your skewer and roll it in a little bit of sugar and let it dry. You don't have to take this step, but it's a good idea. Trust me, I've done this experiment. Once your stick or string cools and dries and has a little bit of sugar on the outside, put it down into your solution. Remember, if you're using a string, it needs to be tied off to a utensil or a pencil to make sure that it doesn't fall all the way into the jar. Then, 
you'll need to exercise the force for the next several days as you wait for your kyber crystal to grow. In this environment that we've created, super saturated solution of sugar molecules is buzzing around looking for friends. And as the sugar molecules find each other during the evaporation of the water, they tend to lock elbows or grasp each other's hands and form a big group. Over time, that group continues to grow and the sugar molecules in the biggest group become the cool kids that everybody wants to hang out with. Over the coming days, you'll notice as crystals start to form both around your stick or your string and maybe around the rim of the jar or around the surface. If you see crystals forming on the surface, be sure to remove them. Errant crystal formation that is not on your stick or on your string will only take resources from your main kyber crystal, keeping it from growing as big as possible. You can go ahead and eat these if you want to. The crystals will continue to form over the next several days and like I said, gather together in a bigger and bigger group, forming patterns and other things really cool to look at. This same process happens here on Earth in the formation of real crystals. Some types of crystals and gemstones, like diamonds, require intense heat and pressure to form over time, but many minerals are formed through the simple dissolution of minerals and the collection of molecules during the evaporation of water. In space, the same type of reaction occurs. Scientists have examined peridot and other types of precious gemstones on meteorites that come from outer space. Future space missions may tell us a significant amount about evaporation and crystal formation way out in the universe. After a few days have passed, you can remove your crystal and put them on a paper towel to dry for a while. In my case, my crystals definitely formed into large chunks, but didn't quite stick to my stick. If that happens, it's completely okay. Drain the additional liquid and remove your rock crystals from inside your jar or glass, placing them on the paper towel to dry. Once the drying process has occurred, examine your crystals up close. If you have a magnifying glass or a microscope, you can even further examine the patterns in the crystals that have formed as the molecules have come together. Now, if you're all out of patience, let go of the force and just eat your kyber crystal. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. This is Amy C. Oliver, Visitor and Science Center Manager at the Fred Lawrence Whipple Observatory and Jedi in Training, signing off. May the Force, and even the Force, be with you.